Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing properties of soil. This will be our first of a couple videos discussing the various properties of soil. Uh, so let's hop right into it. The first property of soil that we need to talk about is color. So what is color? Color is the shade or the hue that you see. And so by now we're all familiar with all different types of colors. You know, we have the colors of the rainbow, like Roy G. Biv, Roy, uh, sorry, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And we, and there's so many more in, in between, so many more specific colors. But what we're gonna do for our first part of our properties of soil is being able to identify the color. And the color becomes important because it really gets to on a fundamental scale what our soil is uh, comprised, uh, composed of, what it is made up of. And so when we're describing color, we need to make sure that we're kind of being specific in what we see. So if we look at our first soil sample, which is right here, a little arrow pointing to it, we can think of a couple kind of words to describe it, right? We can think of uh, the word brown. Brown can be one term that can be used to describe this soil sample. Now let's go to our other soil sample over here at the bottom. We can use it to describe many different ways, right? We can maybe do tan. Maybe we can do uh, gold. It has a little gold color to it. Maybe some people will be describe it as yellow. So there are a lot of different kind of colors that we can use to describe these uh, these soils. And the more specific we can get with the color, the more we'll be able to identify and also be able to kind of understand some of the characteristics of uh, our soil. So our first property of soil is color. Let's move on to our second property of soil, which is texture. So the texture is the feel or the appearance or consistency of a surface. And uh, when we talk about texture, we really think of two things, right? We can look at the appearance of it. What does it look like? Does it look bumpy? Does it look uh, rough? Does it look uh, you know, smooth and all these different other things? Uh, but also when we talk about soil, the important thing to also talk about is being able to touch and feel it. So the appearance of the uh, soil for texture is one thing, but also getting your hands a little bit dirty like we see over here is kind of important as well in that bottom right picture. So what are some words that we can use to describe uh, the texture? Well, let's look over here, right? At our picture at the top right, right here. What are some words that we can use to describe this? Maybe we use a word like bumpy. The P. Bumpy, right? Uh, and so when we use the word texture, right, we can think of specific words or we can think of more general terms, right? When we talk about things such as um, touching it, we can also think about things such as smooth. We can have a smooth texture. We can have maybe over here in this bottom left picture, maybe it's a rough, feels rough on our skin and it really feels, um, Kind of, we can also think of things such as uh, soft and uh, hard. It can be a really hard texture. It can be really soft. It can be really kind of like squishy, uh, different kind of textures that we feel. So whatever we kind of feel as we're rubbing that soil sample in between our fingers and our hands, that consistency of it, 
that's how we can use to describe it. So our first property we're going to talk about today is color. The second property that we are talking about is texture. If we continue on, we think of particle size. So particle size is the size of the individual grain or sediment. And one thing I always like to explain this way is sand, right? When we go to the beach, we can always think of sand as this one big uh, kind of surface that we walk on. But if we pick up sand and we kind of filter it through our fingers, we can see that each one of those pieces of sand, those individual grains of sand are very small. Now, if we look at the bottom left corner, scientists are very uh, excited and have a bunch of different scales and classifications of particle sizes. Now, when we're talking about in fourth grade, we don't really always need to talk about classifying so specifically, is this soil sample that we're talking about, is it a coarse sand? or is it more silty or clay or gravel? In fourth grade, right now, we can really think of things as comparing between them. So if we're comparing soil sample, is it bigger, bigger than soil sample one? So right, it is, is the one, are the two I'm comparing up bigger or smaller? Is it large, is it soft, is it, or sorry, is it small, is it tiny? So when we talk about particle size, yes, we can get very specific like scientists have in this big scale, but right now in fourth grade, we're really looking at what are the general terms. We talked about in color being very specific, but we talk about particle size, especially in fourth grade, we're gonna go very general, big, small, medium sized, if we're comparing two soil samples, maybe bigger than sample, maybe two is bigger, two is bigger than one, or one is smaller than two, the particles. So we have color, we have texture, we have particle size, and the last one is the ability to roll into a ball. So can our soil sample, when we put some water on it, can we roll it into a ball? And a lot of times, people think, oh yeah, so we can roll all kind of soil into a ball, right? Well, a lot of times when we think about soil, uh, we kind of have this understanding of what a soil sample is. And a lot of times we kind of think about this picture on the right, right? We think of kind of like a muddy uh, or a very kind of uh, topsoil heavy um, surface, and those abilities are able to kind of roll easily into a ball. But whether when we have something, so this is more like topsoil, which is very really easy to roll into a, bo a ball. But when we have something like humus, for example, humus doesn't always have the ability to roll into a ball. Sometimes it can, depending on um, what the humus is made up of. Sometimes you see here, when we change colors, we see that they have some bigger sticks in it. And so humus, when it has these kind of bigger sticks, it is harder to roll into a ball. Whereas something like topsoil, the stuff that we usually plant with, um, is very able to easily roll into a ball. So in summary, there are a lot of different ways that we can classify different properties of soil. And we use these properties of soil in order to differentiate or tell the difference between different soils. So we tell the difference between various soil samples by looking at things such as color or the shade or the hue that you see. And the more specific we can get with color, the better. So if we can use something like tan or gold as opposed to like a yellow, then that's always something that we can strive for. Texture is that feel or appearance or consistency of the surface. And when we talk about texture, it's always better to kind of put soil samples through our fingers so we can touch it and get a better understanding. 
but we can talk about things such as bumpy or rough. Maybe our soil sample is smooth or hard or soft. So it's that texture or how it looks on the surface or how it feels in our hand. The next one is particle size. And we're talking about particle size. Scientists have gone and really created this really intricate scale. But in fourth grade, we're really going to talk about some general terms, right? Is it big? Is it small? Is it medium sized? And when we look at particle size, we're really trying to do comparing it. We talked about comparing and comparisons. So we're really looking at two different soil samples. Is soil sample two? Is the particle size larger than soil sample one? Is particles is the sample one? Is those particle size smaller than two? And so we don't really have to worry about all these specific classes, but more in the terms of comparing different soil samples. And lastly, we have the ability to roll into a ball. Now, not all soil samples have the ability to roll into the ball. Some, like humus, have a, a little bit rougher of a time rolling into a ball while things such as topsoil, which is what we normally use when we uh, plant, have an easier time. So that is kind of our walkthrough part one of our soil sample, properties of our soil samples. And I can't wait to see you on the second.